starting the community for families who want to be healthy. So I'm just families who want to be healthy. Be healthy. Yeah, Excellent. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. I'm just gathering data now. This yeah. is a good time to be yeah. thinking like this. So this is great. So you want you want to build a community around families who want to be healthy. You've got lot uh, lots of needs at, and we've got high in Pittsburgh. Perfect examples because they couldn't be more different in scope. Would we all agree? Okay, so what is your community that you want to foster? Here you go, hello, welcome. This is an interactive workshop, so feel free to participate, okay? And I'm catching up to uh, the actual presentation here. I'm afraid to it. Okay, so for example, we said, what, are, what is community? It could be what, is, a, is it a group of, of um, people in a city? Is it an urban community? Is it a group of people? We just came up with three ideas of communities that people in this room are interested in fostering. We've got Pod Camp Pittsburgh, we've got La, um, La, Latinitas, excuse me, Latinitas, and we've got um, an idea of building a community around eating healthy for families. Latinitas is a, a, a Hispanic community of middle school girls, and this other initiative is something that may happen or is being investigated. What you need to think about is perhaps what kinds of ideas you have already about your community that you want to create, and ask yourself, does this community actually already exist? Because chances are it already does. Where are your members of your community? Okay, these are the questions we're gonna keep in the back of our mind. What are they doing now? And what does your community actually need? Taking a step back, and I'm going to refer to our own example of what we did with iTwixy, we knew that our community of tween girls around the globe clearly already exists and was also very much already online and active. They are participating in three or four sites, 68% of, excuse me, 74% of them were already online on social networks, on three or four sites. They were already establishing themselves as very active online. So what we needed to understand is what were they doing now? What were they doing as we were hypothesizing what this community would be and what did they need? And what we did is a lot of secondary research first to hypothesize exactly those answers to those questions. So what is PodCamp Pittsburgh doing now? Think about this. What is La Tanita uh, doing now? And what are people who are looking for healthy habits as a family doing now online and what do they need? Because even though they, even though there are community dynamics that you want to foster, you've got to start with where your audience potentially is coming from and then identify how you can establish your part of the community. Does that make sense? So to do this, you want to identify common vision, mission, values, action items and absolutes for the community that you would like to foster. Obviously, you have a vision of the community that you would like to introduce. However, if you have a vision and a mission that is not necessarily going to be uh, embraced because it doesn't jive with the commonality of the communities that are out there, then you will not be able to obviously establish a community. This seems intuitive, but it's a, a really fundamental, huge first step. What is your vision? So let's look at that first. What is your vision? And now we're gonna get back to the interactivity piece. Um, I'm gonna give you the example of iTwixie. Our vision was to bring tween girls together globally. That is an initiative that seems somewhat arduous. How can you bring together a global community of tween girls? Well, they're already showing that they are active online. They already are showing that the dynamic is there. Now it's a matter of giving them a venue to actually express themselves in a global, like-minded way. So that was a, a, a vision of iTwixy. How about Podcamp Pittsburgh? To foster the growth of the community, is there a like-minded vision amongst the members of that community? Uh, yeah, there actually is. I think the like-minded vision is really uh, producing a, an annual uh, uh, Podcamp type uh, uh, presentation, two-day presentation, that will be engaging to uh, a growing audience. So growing audience and engaging that the idea of the present, presentation of the technology for right. that year on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. Those are two perfect visions, right, for an organization. Can we come up with one for Latinitas as well? Oh, I think the mission is really to, um, to 
to kind of um, gather up the uh, Latin-based girls in the middle schools and provide them mentorship and education. Mentorship and, and education online. Yeah. Okay. For online, for online multimedia and that kind of uh, online publication. They have a magazine online. Okay. So they were just for educating them and giving giving people Latin females. That's true. That education and mentorship. Now, what you want, I would love to step back and actually, since you, this is a budding community that you foster, you probably have a lot of theories on what your global, or your, your vision could be for getting, you know, healthy families together to, I don't know, um, I don't know that I've gotten very far, very far on that. Yeah, but I do want, I mean, I guess the overall vision would be healthier kids, you know, yeah. overall, because I strongly believe it makes a huge difference what kids and babies eat while they're growing up for the rest of their lives. And you so, probably have a lot of consensus on that point. Yeah. Right. So, but, yeah, I don't know what my vision is or mission. I don't even know what the vision is. Yeah. Um, who I would target to be a part of this. Perfect. Yeah, so. Perfect segue to the next point. Okay, so if you, when you it's have this, excuse me, <laughs> he's a plant. He's a plant. <laughs> um, <laughs> did I give you a shirt? <laughs> so, so with that vision, actually identify a lot of challenges and opportunities because you're 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 actually then starting by establishing a vision of what you are seeking to do with your community. Then you have to reach out and realize: Does that community already exist? Does it exist in a way that isn't actually in line with your vision? Does it does it not exist at all? But do you see elements of your vision in other communities that you can then focus on in yours? Does that make sense? And that is exactly what you kind of are, I think, hinting at might be your next step. By establishing a vision for your community, you then actually have to understand who are the members of your growing community going to be. And identify a mission. So if you have, once you have your mission, uh, your vision, then for example, for iTrixie, we sought to create a common bond amongst tween girls globally. So that's trying to understand what are the developmental needs, emotional needs, cognitive needs, societal, cultural needs that exist that are actually common amongst tween girls today. We went in thinking that this might be a challenge, that we might even want to parse the um, the, the site into regions or countries or sections because there just might be a need for under, you know, recognizing all of these subtle differences amongst tween girls. And what we're finding is no. What we're finding is that a tween girl is a tween girl. She is facing the same pressures, the same developmental um, issues on this global basis that actually is drawing them together. We've got girls from Switzerland, Australia, um, Peru, you know, France and all over the country who are saying the same things. They have the same needs and the same ideas that would foster this global community bond. So then you reach out, you have this mission. What is, that was the ITRIXI mission that we're obviously still executing. Now you go to your community, take your, vi your um, vision, and now you seek to execute something. What is the thing that will draw your people together in a community format? So for PodCamp Pittsburgh, obviously technology, there are a lot of things that draw the um, community together and the execution of an annual event is probably what you would, would um, say is the mission, I guess, to make sure that you can pull off this annual event in a very uh, effective and meaningful way. I, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but I think that that's a great example. It's working, it's happening, it's growing. You know that you have this community exists. It's recognized all over the country. We have the La Tunitas example. I think they probably are doing the same thing. They have, a, they have this vision, they have this um, mission, this action of having this online magazine that's offering the mentoring and offering the education. And it's existing, it's gaining ground, it's moving forward. You have a budding community that you're exploring. And I love that example because the family, wanting families to have a tool to foster health of their children is something that kind of exists. But is there an initiative? I don't know, I mean, I haven't done research, but is there an initiative that you can identify that's close or not close, not not on the mark or that isn't as far reaching to bring together these growing elements into a community that fosters healthy um, eating for kids and then execute it i guess is the idea 
I don't know. I mean, I'm throwing that out as a question. There probably would be, you could probably go to La Tinita's, iTwixy, um, a lot of pediatric sites. You, there's probably a lot of secondary research that you could cull together to find actually there are 20 initiatives in this venue, but then you can identify what your niche would be that would bring your community to get together. It's a thought. The third um, common thing that you need to seek is the values. You want to establish common values in your community. We wanted to um, create an I2C community that drew, drew strength from their diversity. In other words, it would be really easy to say La Tinitas is this, um, this magazine that is you know, fostering this um, you know, education and mentoring amongst girls and only focusing on their common elements, whereas I would imagine you could, you could parse out what that um, demographic ends up being into a million pieces to understand why all of those needs are different and why that community is so strong. So by building on the strength of this community in and of itself is, is going to be paramount to you know, focusing maybe too heartily on, on what you actually think your community is all about. So this is a, this is a great example of where we, we need to listen to our community. We thought that the values of our values and the girls' values would align judgmentally. And what we're finding is some of the things that we thought that the girls would really value, yes, they do in some, but they value some things that we took a little bit for granted even more. And so we need to find, even though we have that like-minded approach, we actually are trying to focus on the values that are seeming more important to the actual community itself. How are you determining that? We, we analyze the, the activity on the site on an ongoing basis. The site changes every day, and so we are able to watch and listen to the comments, uh, the different surveys we put up, the actual views, and the actual time that the girls spend on, on uh, the site for, at, different uh, at different moments in the development of different content. So we really try to pay close attention to that activity and then draw conclusions to help optimize. But that's something that is um, that makes people very nervous when we're talking about establishing a community. That could be something that is it can make someone very nervous because a little bit of your control then is given to the audience of your community or your membership of your community, I should say. So back to you know your individual. I think this one is probably overstated. We're all together on that point, correct? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then to give action items. Now, what does this mean? We're going to get more into this in a minute. But when you have identified your vision, your mission, and you understand your common values, and you're listening to, you're already initiating your community growth, you want to be able to foster the activity that allows you to always gauge how your community is growing. So you need to give action items. PodCamp Pittsburgh has this event every year, but there are action items in between, I would imagine, do you do something in uh, the we have uh, we've had I think monthly meetings uh, just uh, with and eventually we split out into uh, uh, um, committees uh, for going after like sponsors and speakers and uh, all the various functions so our action items were as a group things to do and then within uh, committees things to do almost monthly over the last 10 months and then how are you fostering the growth there, there was just a tweet that the camera is only showing the door uh, oh, where's the camera the camera's right here oh yeah oh. Just rest in there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No All right. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Then I'll have to move over here. I'm sorry about that. So the action items that Pot Pittsburgh identifies 
is a matter of pushing out the community, but how are, what are the action items of the community members themselves? So you have your organizers that are reaching out? Right. What, what action items are you offering your community members? So that's, it's a different, it's a little bit of a different um, action item. To get your community to truly grow and embrace the ideals of your vision and then the, the mission that you've set out. Now that comes from the organizational end. The values that are shared by both the members and the organizers need to become action items. In other words, the community actually starts to grow itself because it shares the values of the broader organizers. And so what I'm, I guess what I'm challenging is, as much as you're getting together monthly, you're getting together and, and going out into the groups to push out the growth of your community. The next step is getting your community to take action on behalf of the community itself. And that action is actually what we're talking about when we're talking about these action items. Okay. okay. So then what is the community? Maybe the community, you know, you, uh, there's ongoing communication with the community. Maybe what could grow Pot Camp Pittsburgh quicker, greater, or create even more of a, uh, a broader audience or membership of the community itself is to get the community to act, to start in the planning, vote in the planning. For example, if you're getting together monthly, could there be updates on the blog, on the on, on Twitter that invite the community to have a voice in some of the things that you're discussing? Does that make sense? So in Latinitas, what are the action items in the community on your on your um, level? What your involvement is going to be in growing that community? What are the action items you can give to your actual viewers and and um, membership? Well, would that include something like getting uh, form like sponsorship and mentorship? people that come in to help educate? That would be on the pushing end, yes, from the from the planning and the uh, the group that is organizing the community, yes, that those are action items. But you want to get you want to transfer the action, the 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 um, the actual doing of the growth of the community. The actual growth needs to then become part of the community itself. And so what are the girls then bringing to the party? Are they reading the this the uh, content more? Are they actually going out and getting more girls to join um, either the online community or subscribe because there's something that they're doing together that's strengthening the community and making them want to then become more active with Latinita? That's more the, the shift here. Inter interesting correlation to that would be Apple's uh, use of uh, application developers for their iPhone. Apple didn't go out and attempt to build a bunch of applications themselves. They gave the tools to a community to build applications, and all of a sudden we have 30,000 applications built by maybe 10,000 uh, uh, developers. Excellent example. I think that that is, that, and, and it's such a successful example. Right. Uh, we're seeing growing success with iTwixie as we continue to offer features to the girls and then we foster, as they're really getting interested in whatever these new features are, we're trying to encourage their action on growing that feature. For example, we just recently offered them the opportunity to create their own blogs. It's an iTwixy blog. They can visit each other's blog. They post on each other's blogs in the safe community that we've provided. And so what we've tried to foster is some continued growth of that feature. They seem to love it, but it's not... It's not throughout the whole community that, that the girls are blogging. You know, it's, a, it's kind of a new concept for that age group. However, we recognized the blogger of the month last month. This is a perfect example of how this is a feature that's growing the community itself. The girls are now voting on who's going to be the blogger of the month this month for October. In doing so, they're reaching out to more of their friends saying, you've got to check out these blogs, vote for my blog, post on my blog, and they're bringing more girls to iTwixie so that they can express themselves in all these diverse ways that they've chosen to express themselves. It's, it's an action item that we've given to them so that then they can foster increased activity and also increased direction as to where the community is going to go next. And finally, you have to have some absolutes for your community. So one of our absolutes is to model understanding, helpfulness, and respect amongst tween girls globally. This is huge. This is huge because each community cannot tolerate something. So Apple cannot tolerate people 
um, submitting proposals for payment for these applications for icons because they created this community of ongoing development for the um, the, I mean, the uh, development of these applications. So they will not tolerate that. That would be, I would think, an understood absolute. Don't even bother submitting this for payment. Mm -hmm. Something might happen with you one day, but absolutely no. Hockey in Pittsburgh, again, absolutely this is not going to be a paid for conference. This is a confer conference of shared um, like-minded people who, et cetera, et cetera. Now that's interesting because other pod camps are attempting to do the paid model. Oh really? Uh, yeah, uh, pod camp Boston that started it all this year was a paid event. Um, and their reason was that uh, they would have a lot of registrants and a lot of people wouldn't show up. So you'd have extra food and t-shirts and stuff like that that would go to waste. So it's an interesting, interesting kind of So they're breaking idea. a rule. Well, that's, that's, we'll get to this yeah. next point in a second, but the whole point that we will be discussing is flexibility. But I think you still have to have that absolute. So for the for the first three years, PodCamp uh, Boston was free. So Correct. now they, they've kind of broken their own rule. Uh, we, we'll see if the rationale held up and if there are a lot of complaints and, and if it will then translate to other cities. Um, what are your absolutes for your organization? You need to have them because you can't blurry your lines haphazardly. So it would have to be a strong point of view to bring up the new notion of having a paid conference, for example. Or if all of a sudden Apple was to say, okay, oh, now we are going to start paying because we're getting too many applications on the iPhone. Who knows? You know, there would have to be a strong rationale for changing that absolute. And the same would be for iTwixie. One of the things that we've fostered, even though we're you know reaching globally and we're um, looking for this commonality amongst the girls and we're helping each other and fostering this understanding and respect, we aren't pretending to be an organization that will help you with a crisis in your life. So if a tween girl comes to iTwixie and says, you know, I'm I'm 10 and this horrifying thing is happening to me on a daily basis in my home, we're not pretending to say, I mean, we very much care for the situation, we will refer the, the girl to a, a better resource, but we won't open up our, our, you know, our definition to say, oh, now we're a health organization for kids in crisis. We're not. That's not our purpose. It is an absolute, and it would take a lot for us to all of a sudden become an organization. There are so many organizations that we would rather refer the girls to who are experts in those fields. Um, does that make a lot of sense? Would you, would you say your absolutes are kind of your values, your mission kind of matched together? I think they do, but there's, it's like a boundary. I think your absolutes kind of create a boundary for you to therefore focus on your mission and your vision and your action items, etc., so that you you don't go in too many directions. If you if you start to hear mutterings of, let's say all of a sudden we find that iTwixy is becoming a place where every girl needs help on homework, and which is a somewhat half-truth. There, we have a lot of interest in helpful uh, tips on doing homework, uh, but it's on a level that we can help, we, that we can provide. But let's say that they all of a sudden are all asking about, you know, science or to, they are, there may be then a need for either the community to broaden or have an outgrowth of the community to recognize that need or to identify a partner with which to satisfy that need. But but by having that absolute in place you can identify what those needs might then emerge to be because you have given yourself a nice, firm understanding of what your community is all about. So it's the scoping everything else, pretty much? Pretty much, yes. I University. I Twixie University is next, yes. <laughs> and it will, be, it will be a wonderful place. Okay, so after you've um, understood Kind of those key, you, you kind of um, have identified those key d dynamics. You get your your community kind of in place. You're seeing some great growth, and you're you know one of the ideas that we always are um, are working on is to establish a culture of welcoming, you know, and, and respect and whatnot. You'll start to identify the moment where your leadership of your community has fostered a new group of leaders who are leading your community. In other words, you have a push. An initiative where you're hoping that, that these are 
you know, you've identified all this this list of things, and you're hoping that this is resonating, and that's why you're growing. And then you observe that there is a whole subset of people who are kind of gear of uh, leading that same activity, fostering the same ideas of the vision, the mission, and the action statements amongst themselves. And then you recognize, wow, we're really onto something. And that's actually something that we're starting to see on iTwixy. You know, we have, a, a, obviously, we have a group of people where we're leading comments, we lead um, by example, and we're always hoping that the girls will pick up that and, and start going. And there are girls all over the world that are now the first responders to any new member, for example. They will, they will beat us to the punch, and, and that you couldn't ask for a better recognition that, oh, okay, this is not just us wishing that this is true, it's actually happening, and this is a culture that's emerging on its own. And then it becomes a matter of ongoing empowerment. I, I think that I have to back up and say you know, there are a lot of resources online for identifying ways to grow a community. Chris Brogan does a great job. I mean, I know that there are numerous blogs and organizations that you can reach out to just you know look for community growth. But but one of the things that no one has highlighted yet that I think is interesting is that there used to be communities that sometimes we're all about identifying problems, identifying whistleblowing communities. You, you can think of a few, I'm, su I'm sure, on your own. But, but there are these entities that may have even been negative in nature. It seems that right now we're in a trend where the communities that are really growing, that are really emerging as powerful, are the communities that are actually empowering the communities to be helpful and participate collaborate and do things in a helpful and, and proactive way. And I think that's incredible. I don't know that this is true, but I believe that it's happening because I'm, I'm witnessing it on my own as, as we're growing our own community. And even in the culture of tween girls around the country, around the globe, the organizations that are all about, oh my gosh, look at these terrible trends amongst tween girls, aren't getting as powerful of a voice as the organizations that are saying, hey, these girls are great. Look at the positive things they're doing and look how they're activating positive change. And I think that that's kind of a trend of today versus just something that you would see on, um, in between girl demographic. I'm also seeing it, for example, look at the FTC's announcement of the new regulations about sponsorship. Now, I think there, there are some communities maybe six years ago that would have jumped at that and started complaining about how that is just unfair, et cetera, blah, blah. No, what we're hearing is this huge voice of, look how this is gonna help our communities be more transparent, be more credible, have more authenticity. And I think that's interesting because it's taking, it's, it's just a, a very positive change from, I think, in a cultural way, maybe, or on a trending basis. Um, we're definitely seeing it again with uh, iTwixie. The more we empower the girls to participate, collaborate, and take action, the more they seem to do those things in a very positive way. And I think that that's one of the most important things that is not just happening today, but is all about community growth. Chris Brogan talks about it all the time. If you can activate your membership to be helpful to each other, your membership becomes more powerful and then will grow and reach out and help each other. How is that? then uh, play out with your communities. One of the things that we do on iTwixie is we encourage the girls to share their accomplishments. Now we could be inviting them to share their biggest gripe of the week. We could. We choose to ask them to share their accomplishments. We <coughs> ask them to, to complete challenges. We pose challenges to them. Go do this and tell us how it works for you. And they love it. They come back, and, and this is exactly what they, they do. What could you do in, in your communities to likewise per, act, um, activate them to participate? We kind of talk about that in action items. But it's important to think about, it's almost like assignments. Like, what assignments can you give to your community to then feedback? And it's less passive as a survey and, and giving feedback. It's more active as a, this is going to help our community grow. Um, could PodCamp Pittsburgh reach out to some of the blogging organizations right here in Pittsburgh and say, reach out to your communities and find out what are the, you know, what are the five trends that are emerging in your community on a local basis? And how could that then impact the direction of, of PodCamp Pittsburgh next year? 
I don't know, same with Latinitas. How can your community reach out to the girls and say, you know, do this, um, try, uh, try sharing ethnic recipes amongst your um, neighborhoods, and is that an empowering element in and of its own? And, and I would imagine there are a lot of different kinds of interests that are that are in your community that you could yeah, you know, come up with. Because I do a lot of work with, um, with like making movies, shooting, so they do photography, you know, uh, cinematography, they do um, interviewing skills. So it'd be interesting to give like one stand up movie with a little homework assignment to say shoot a 30 second video clip and then have the experts that give them feedback. So you don't necessarily have to have it at a school favorite bank if it was a you know, person who uh, school that didn't have it, this organization at their school, then you could just give them feedback. You know, that would totally grow them. Oh, and I think what's what's amazing is you take a message that is now outgoing and it becomes a response mechanism. So it actually activates the community to take that, that kernel that is being offered and show how it has changed or or how they've actually internalized it and used it in their own lives, which I agree. I think that, that that's exactly the idea here. Empower them to do something and then the message actually becomes all the more strong. You know, it was one thing from yesterday's um, lecture from Monoclock, and I looked at their website, one of the things that I noticed about them was how much they engaged their audience. And I think this is probably why you're so successful at what you're doing, is because you're engaging with, with the girls. And it's not just having stuff for them to read, but having them to read and then feedback. Or, and it's amazing how many people do the, the craziest things that they would totally participate in. Can you identify this item? You know, oh, and 10 million people signed in all at once. So it's one of those things that I think the web is evolving and how we put out websites. It's really trying to get to the audience to give us not only feedback, but really get them involved. Well, and I guess that's interesting because I think when you share the accomplishments, you actually then also see collaboration of your in your own community. And this is something that we're witnessing on iTwixy. So one of the things that we've asked the girls to do is to, um, but we talked about the blogging contest, but we've also asked them to actually go out and create an article of their own to be posted on Twixie. On, um, on the site, we have five different subject areas where we offer daily articles with, um, with a challenge or some sort of interactivity to it, and it covers anything from fashion to the latest scientific breakthrough or the latest math tip to an incredible great recipe that, that can power you up for your activities. But we, and we, we get that content from a variety of sources ourselves, different partnering organizations, et cetera. So we thought, how fun, the girls were blogging about tips or recipes or you know, some of the same kinds of information, but they couldn't put it up for all of the girls to see. They were only being able to show it on their own blog. So we offered them the opportunity to write an official article and publish it on the site and give them the credit. Well, what happened is now the girls are actually reaching out and talking to each other about how they could, your blog is all about tips for um, being successful at school. You could write, this is the girls commenting to each other. You could actually put that together if you could offer a little segment on blah, blah, blah. That would be a great article for girls around the world to be more successful at school. So what we've done is we, by asking them to share their ideas and to, you know, get involved on the site, we've actually also strengthened their community in reaching out to each other to identify better ways for the community to meet its needs. So these girls clearly have a need for better organizing themselves to achieve their goals, and they're reaching out to each other to better that kind of tip offering. And it's exciting, and it's happening on a collaborative basis. So that's kind of like what you were just saying. It, it, it's not just offering interaction opportunities, it's actually offering or empowering your members to better the community itself. And by doing that, it becomes stronger and incredibly powerful for both the leaders of the community, because then you know where the community wants to go, but it also empowers the strength of the authenticity of the community, which is priceless. Is that pretty much, I mean, I think that the same thing could be said for Pot King Pittsburgh. Yeah, definitely. Right. And even by offering those members, okay, who are not in your monthly meetings and right. are not in the initial contacts that your group goes out to, giving those then, those third generation members, the chance to maybe collaborate in groups of twos or threes 
by assignment or just by, you know, just sparking the idea, wow, what could happen? Um, and, and it would be an incredible, probably an incredible benefit for the community at large. Can you like a real look at the how one of these, let's just say, assignments would go. Like, do you give your um, Tootsie girls like that potential to actually like post to your website, or do they always have to be moderated? Like, if they're trying to get their ideas shared on the main story, do they submit that to you, and then you approve it and post it as is, and do they have um, rights to write to the website itself? Now, the one thing that we have that it's a hurdle for I2XC that's unlike any other site is that we we actively um, engage kids under the age of 13. And in doing so, there's, there are a lot of hurdles that we have to clear in order to be able to do this. And one of them is to comply with the FTC's guidelines. And there's, there was a law passed called COPA uh, many years ago. And, and, and there are very specific guidelines that you have to follow in order to engage a kid under the age of 13, which we gladly comply um, with because it's in the interest of the safety of our children, but it's also incredibly like-minded with the approach of iTwixie itself, um, because we're, we're all about empowering girls and their safety and, and, and bringing out the best of girls around the world. Um, I say all that as a backdrop because, yes, everything on iTwixie is 100% moderated. Everything we have to look, uh, we have to look at every picture, every video, and every posting to make sure that it is not sharing too much information about their personal lives or how you could contact them. or And then secondarily, just because it's an iTwixie um, posting that we're evaluating, we want to make sure that it's empowering, respectful, and um, you know is in line with all the values that we've set forth as a community. Now, adult communities, you don't need to moderate on that level. And I think one of the strengths of the adult communities is that you actually see a self-moderation take place where the the people that aren't in line or aren't empowering each other who are disrespectful, et cetera, kind of weed themselves out. And frankly, we don't see any any need really to moderate inappropriate comments on iTwixie because the, the culture has been so very much established but then agreed to by the girls that everything that we're getting back is very much in line and empowering. So it kind of has mirrored the adult experience, but because we are um, legally bound to moderate in that in that fashion, you know, obviously we do, and and it gives us the opportunity, though, also to have our fingers on the pulse of every single thing that hits, uh, because we do actually see every single thing that comes in. But how big is your staff that would do this? Because our organization is. <laughs> I mean, I think it's even nationwide that we do this in a lot of middle schools. It's sort of like an after school program. Um, you know, I'm not, I have to look at their, at their website because I do believe they have a blogging site for the girls. Um, I'm just curious about your staff because I mean, just checking my Facebook, gosh, that takes. It's a challenge. We we have a we have we have several people that that do a lot of moderating on on almost a full time basis, but it's more in conjunction in concert with developing the site's content. So it's a. It's a perfect um, partnership of skill sets and also then fosters greater, uh, I think, greater richness to the content on iTwixie. I think every organization would have to, you know, see how that would work out um, and suit the needs of the organization. But it's perfect for us, again, because we want to be so close to the community itself and make sure that we are actually following the needs that are being, uh, being uh, brought up. Um, is that enough on that point? Okay, so the action, the, the, the last, um, the last item is really action, which we've kind of talked about through all of this. I mean, you really want to engage and empower and, and you know, do all these things that are going to get your group to do things. But it actually, this, this is meant to transcend even your site, even your interactivity on the site. This is actually having an effect on the community at large on a daily basis. So in other words, one of the things that we are seeing with iTwixy is that we're getting comments that the girls are going into their lives with their families and their friends and they're doing things and they're posting and they're growing the community like we stated, but they're also, they're taking action on the part of iTwixy beyond just 
the site itself. They're actually doing things in their lives that are different. We've had an effect on the way that, that kids are doing things and they're taking action. So I think that feeds the site, but it also feeds this great empowerment of the community at large. And when, when that happens, I think it's priceless. And um, yeah, just goes on a yes. mean girl, and um, she's on touch with a lot. Um, but one thing that I really liked about it was the I should see pledge, and you didn't mention that, which I thought was really a nice thing because it talks about what I will do on the site, what I what I won't do on the site, and and, uh, and then that kind of plays out into the real world. Well, actually, and you know that's that's a great. That would have been a great thing to highlight, I guess, to show like how you're, you're uh, setting up your, your values and your absolutes. And we did do that. We created a pledge. The girls aren't, we, we didn't have to do anything like that. I think a lot of sites say, um, please make sure, please check the box to say that you that you will apply or I mean abide by these kinds of rules. Well, we asked the girls to actually read the pledge and with their parents and then to sign it and then to it's mail really it. Easy to read. I mean, it's easy. It's not like one of these I agree oh, right. when you go on these other websites and you know it's you like I agree. Right. You just scroll down and put the I agree. Yeah. And it, it really makes sense and it, it's in plain terms. And I, I just remember that when we first got onto it and I thought that that makes sense and. Uh, and well, good, and I and I think that that's a really special thing for this group of this demographic. Um, but I think that on sites where you have a mission statement or a value proposition that's very differentiated, and for us it was iTwixy. There's nothing like iTwixy on the web right now. Um, the sites for girls, and, and we could spend another hour talking about the the ways that girls are approached in society today, and the the kinds of communication techniques that are offered to them. And they're very much in a little, kind of in a little box. And what we wanted to do is break out into this, this different idea about approaching tween girls that recognized what they were really into. And in doing so, we also wanted to have an agreement about how they were going to approach each other, et cetera. And that's why we came up with the I2C pledge. But it's just a few points, meaty points, and you agree to it, you sign it. What we never expected is that the girls really do it. I mean, we don't require them to do it for their membership. We thought it was a nice, and we ask them to do it, and they do, and they mail it to us, and we have a file of all of these great signed copies of this pledge, and it's just a whole little page document that represents their commitment to the um, Doesn't it to also set their expectations for what you're going to provide and you're not going to provide to? Exactly. Like getting back to your earlier point. Exactly. And it also sets up their responsibilities. So I think that's one of the things that, you know, I think at the end of all of this, you want you want to be able to have your community buying into all the things that you've set forth, but be flexible then to follow the direction of the community itself. Are we done? I'll just walk around. Oh, yeah, you can, yeah, until like 10 minutes. Yeah, if you want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, You'll be next. Okay, good. <laughs> that is actually the sum <laughs> of the presentation. I wanted at the very end to share a couple of stories about um, iTwixy and see if there's anything that you could share. Action items, this is where Norm will come in, um, so that we can identify action items for ourselves to then take back to our own communities that we want to grow. There are a lot of different approaches that you can take to your to to this kind of a process, but at the end of the day. At the end of iTwixy's day, we recognize that you have to be flexible because what you actually go to your board or whoever your organization committee, steering committee is, and you say, This is what our community is going to look like, and this is our, this is our mission, this is our vision, these are our action items, etc. After a certain amount of activity, you're going to see whether or not you were close, spot on, or completely wrong based on what the community tells you. And they will tell you. You will, you will witness it directly. And one of the funniest things I thought on, with, with the development of iTwixie was um, you know, we developed the site in a way that um, we purposely put a lot of educational material on it. We put all this really, pardon me, but nerdy stuff. We put a lot of articles about animals, science, latest um, discoveries and, and put really educational pictures along there. We wanted to push the envelope to see how will the girls respond to some of this stuff. And they loved it. We didn't expect that. We had we thought maybe once a week we'd put a really educational piece of content on the site 
and then engage their interest and then follow. Well, we never expected that some of the highest uh, viewed sections of the site actually come from these incredibly informationally based articles. And so we had to up the ante. We had to start having more of them um, to, on, on the site to really meet the needs. And the second thing that we learned was that the girls want to know how to be organized. And in retrospect, it's it's intuitive because they're they're probably the most hurried generation ever. They're doing more activities than ever. They have commitment um, pressure more than ever to commit to a certain sport. By age eight, you're supposed to be on a travel team. I mean, it, intuitively, it, start, it makes a lot of sense. So this group, they don't have this free time. They don't have a lot of the luxuries of being a kid that maybe all of us grew up with. So they, they find themselves in need of a planner, in a, in a need of you know how to organize themselves. And we weren't really prepared for that. But obviously, we've embraced it. And we've we definitely uh, are always searching for ways are for better. Like I think. Well, we're. We'll have to see what. That would be a great idea to just license out Itrixia <laughs> as a planning tool because they, you know, that's one of the things that they are really struggling with as a demographic is how yeah. to really organize really themselves. Cool if you have like an Apple app and have a planner and your friends network. Would be nice. Do you advertise it? We do. And how do you handle that? This is like Google Ads or? No. We, we are only building relationships with like-minded organizations and brands. And we, our, our content and our advertising opportunity is all about a very rich um, advertorial kind of approach. So we will never partner with just anybody. Right. It's very I mean, basic. a lot of ads you see could very, be very inappropriate for exactly. certain audiences. In fact, you go to a lot of sites that say that they're targeting this demographic, and you'll see, you know, Singleton and DC. There's right. a site, Alley Cats, and I, it just cracks me up. You go, and they're like, you know, join our singles group. And I think, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> how, can we, how can people do this? Well, how can you let your kid on? Yeah. But yeah, so we don't, we don't do anything with that. But what about? Is there anything on a, on your community, you know, list that makes you nervous about throwing it out there and seeing if the community will respond? Are there any any are there any challenges about, uh, facing your communities? Come I think it's just people. filtering myself, like because I have I'm really spread out. You were trying to say this before, like I have you know, professional things that I'm doing, and then I have on the other extreme, like just goofy joking around stuff that I get as a podcast, and so I'm constantly making sure I don't cross those streams and making that. And then is that going to come back in? at some point because I'm trying to like, you know, be young and, and invincible and online and I know, but I know I know that that has so many questions so managing that is, is, is part of myself. Yeah. So, and before I, I worked for a global law firm, now I worked for a marketing company, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> well you mean in, in terms of your own brand, like how is your brand then being perceived? Yeah. Well, if you Google, if you, yeah, if you Google me, you're gonna find pretty much everything I'm involved with and you know I just I have to live with that, but I think I don't know if that's what you're asking, but um, I think it's a great it's actually a great point because as you have a commitment to a community, you have a commitment to a certain value set, and so are you violating that value set that you yourself have defined by the community that you're part of? And I also think that you know, right. I have a commitment to my employer too that I'm not going to do anything that would yeah. damage their reputation. Um, you know, I had a conversation with um, Pink Girl before she right. announced herself yeah. that was basically like that, and, like I said, and I said that to her. You know, you maybe want to think about what this how was going to impact them because you you are, you do work for them. Right. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.